Well, the media keep proclaiming that Donald Trump is the scariest person who ever was. President Trump continues to bash the, the mainstream media, he continues to suggest that they are indeed fake news. He continued that this morning when he woke up at 5.30 in the morning and decided to rewatch Lou Dobbs. Yes, that's actually what happened. He woke up at 5.30 in the morning and he TiVos a lot of the shows on Fox News and Fox Business and he decided to watch Lou Dobbs' show. Lou Dobbs is talking about the search results over in Google uh, and President Trump decided to tweet this out. This is 14. Do it out. Google search results for Trump News shows only the viewing reporting of fake new media. In other words, they have it rigged for me and others so that almost all stories and news is bad. Fake CNN is prominent. Republican, conservative, and fair media is shut out. Illegal. 96% of results on Trump news are from national left-wing media. Very dangerous. Google and others are suppressing voices of conservatives and hiding information and news that is good. They're controlling what we can and cannot see. This is a very serious situation. Will be addressed. Well, I don't think the president actually Googles things. Uh, he, he apparently doesn't use a computer, really. So the, where he got this information is that Lou Dobbs is talking about search results when it comes to Google News. And it's true that the Google News bias in favor of large media organizations is pretty severe. And that does have an actual impact on the kind of news that people consume. And it does mean that they actually consume a fair bit of misinformation that is put out by the mainstream media. Now, it's important to remember that when President Trump says things like fake news and means just any news he doesn't like, he was not the originator of the phrase fake news. The originator of the phrase fake news, Trump says that he made it up. He didn't make it up. It was made up by the left. The left suggested that Hillary Clinton had lost the election, if you recall, due to fake news. There were a bunch of false stories put out on Facebook. People believed those false stories. And then they voted for Donald Trump instead of Hillary Clinton. President Trump said the actual fake news are the members of the mainstream media. And unfortunately, members of the mainstream media seem intent on proving his point almost every day. The latest example comes courtesy of CNN. So President Trump has focused on CNN incessantly. And there's a reason for that. Here's the latest example. CNN absolutely botched a story claiming that President Trump knew in advance about the June 2016 Trump Tower meeting between members of the Trump campaign and a Russian-backed lawyer supposedly offering dirt on Hillary Clinton. You know, there's been a lot of focus on this particular meeting, obviously, because in the run-up to the meeting, Donald Trump Jr. was emailing with an associate of his from Russia who was basically saying that the Russian government wants to supply the Trump campaign with dirt on Hillary, so why don't you meet with this lawyer? And Trump Jr. was like, sounds great. And then they had the meeting. Well, one of the big questions has been, did Trump know in advance about the meeting? Well, CNN reported July 26th, 2018, claiming that Trump did know in advance about the meeting. Well, it turns out the person who supplied that information was Lanny Davis, who is the Clinton-associated lawyer for Michael Cohen, who at the time was attempting to show the Mueller investigation that Michael Cohen had something valuable to offer. CNN says it stands by the story, but Davis told the Washington Post this week, quote, I should have been more clear, including with you, that I could not independently confirm what happened. I regret my error. Davis also told Anderson Cooper of CNN, I think the reporting of the story got mixed up in the course of a criminal investigation. We were not the source of the story. The CNN story originally said Davis offered no comment. It turns out that on background, he had actually provided virtually all of the story. CNN said, quote, we stand by our story. We are confident in our reporting of it. That story rocketed around the media. It was echoed by NBC News and the Washington Post. According to BuzzFeed News, Davis was the confirming source for all of that. Those admissions follow another admission from Lanny Davis, Michael Cohen's lawyer, regarding a claim that President Trump knew beforehand about the hacking of Democratic emails by the Russians. Now Davis says, quote, I am not sure. There's a possibility that is the case, but I am not sure. So the source for half of the media's news regarding Russian collusion and Trump Tower and all the rest of it is Lanny Davis, the lawyer for Michael Cohen, who has now gone on record admitting that he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. CNN stands by the story anyway. According to BuzzFeed News, quote, the network, in effect, doesn't appear to believe it made a mistake. The story was, some inside CNN argue, carefully worded to hedge against those in the Cohen camp changing their tune. In other words, the story reports claim that Cohen had said he was willing to make, not the underlying truth of those claims. So in other words, CNN says, listen, we didn't report that Cohen knew that Trump had known about the Trump Tower meeting in advance. No, the CNN story reported that Cohen was willing to tell prosecutors that he might have known about that stuff. So we had carefully caveated this. Right? The decision from CNN to continue to stand by the story suggests it believes the strength of its other sources outweighs any waffling from Davis, according to BuzzFeed, or that the network believes Davis was telling the truth then and not now. But Davis's news statement that he was the source for a story he now refutes raised questions about what action, if any, the network might take. We should address Lanny Davis's comments in our reporting and be more transparent with our readers about our reporting, one CNN staffer told BuzzFeed News. 
Now, I have some personal experience with stories like this. So I remember back in 2013, Chuck Hagel was nominated for Secretary of Defense by the Obama administration. Chuck Hagel was, in my opinion, radically anti-Israel. He was a he was a an isolationist on foreign policy. And there was a big push from the right to stop Chuck Hagel's nomination. Well, I was supplied information by top sources in the Senate that that Chuck Hagel had spoken to some group called Friends of Hamas. It was just a rumor. And we reported it on Breitbart News as a rumor. The actual title of the piece said, we called up the White House, the White House basically hung up on us. And the, the title of the piece was something like, White House spokesperson hangs up about, based on rumors of Friends of Hamas, something like that. It was pretty clear in the piece that it was a rumor. Now, that was a correctly reported rumor because it turns out that the rumor was not true. But should we have reported it in the first place? The answer is no. And I've said this multiple times since. It was a mistake not to retract the story. It was a mistake to report the story in the first place. CNN basically did the same thing here, but they're not backing off the story. Right? The same mainstream media that suggested that story was bad and was largely right is now suggesting that this story by CNN is kind of okay. And then President Trump complaining about fake news is labeled crazy. You have folks in the media claiming that the, that the news media are the reliable sources in all of this. It's hard to give a lot of credibility to news sources that hold a double standard when it comes to people on the right. They would never hold for people on the left. And the levels to which the media will go in order to disparage and slander the Trump administration are pretty astonishing. It's mostly astonishing because if they would just be accurate about the Trump administration, it's not like they would have nothing to report. But the opinions of the left are so out of the realm of normalcy that it's, it's almost impossible to defend. Take, for example, this column from Jill Filipovich. This, isn't an, this is not an objective news piece. This is a column. But Jill Filipovich is a feminist author, and she is the, the, uh, the author of a book called The H Spot, The Feminist Pursuit of Happiness. Which is, the, the book is completely blank. There is no feminist pursuit of happiness. It's just like Michael Knowles' book. So Jill Filipovich writes a piece called Stormy Daniels, Feminist Hero. And this is how far the left is willing to go. Stormy Daniels, a porn star who spends her entire career legitimately catering to the worst in men, is now, a, is now a feminist hero for having sex with a married man once in order to get on The Apprentice, and then taking money to shut up about it, and then reneging on the taking of the money to shut up about it, to make a big deal about it. She's a feminist hero. Here's Jill Filipovich, quote, let's take a moment for Stormy Daniels. On Tuesday, Michael Cohen pled guilty to breaking campaign finance laws, charges stemming from payments he made to two women, one of them, Ms. Daniels, with whom, Ms. with whom Donald Trump is said to have had an affair. Mr. Cohen, a former lawyer for Mr. Trump, says he made the payments at the direction of the president in an effort to influence the 2016 election. It's an extraordinary admission and an extraordinary political moment, not just because of what it means for Mr. Trump. It marks an unanticipated feminist turning point. Ms. Daniels is an adult film star and, like the president, an unapologetic self-promoter. Hers is not a female archetype that has historically garnered much respect, trust, or sympathy. Well... Yeah, because she legitimately gets paid to have sex on film so that other men can masturbate to it. That is legitimately her career. So yeah, I wouldn't go with feminist archetype there. Yet here she is, an imperfect, entirely self-possessed woman telling her story with clarity and without shame. And here we are actually listening to her. Okay, let's be clear. The only reason anybody's listening to her is because one, prurient interest, and two, she's saying crap about a president that the left hates. This is why there's so much power in the fact that Ms. Daniels does not believe her job or her involvement with Mr. Trump or the payoff is her shame to carry. She wants him held accountable, and the justice system is actually stepping in. She is refusing to slink away, despite being paid to do exactly that in a pattern we've seen too many times from influential men seeking to maintain their dominance and avoid responsibility. Did I miss something here? I thought Stormy Daniels was paid to voluntarily go away and sign a contract to that effect. Was she forced into anything here? I missed that part. So, just to be clear, when you violate a contract that's good and feminist, so long as it hurts Donald Trump. Jill Filipovich writes, Miss Daniels is a sex worker, making her the kind of bad woman scorned for her work, who's often not believed when she indicts a powerful man. Well, her work is garbage. And when she, quote, indicts a powerful man, we sort of have to decide whether or not she is credible. Her credibility is not really called into question by the fact that she's a porn star. She's not even claiming she was sexually assaulted or harassed. She's claiming that she had sex with a guy once and then won't shut up about it before an election, right? That's, that's legitimately her entire claim, but this makes her a feminist hero. In a second, we will talk about the feminist heroism of a woman who does girl-on-girl -girl scenes for pay. As Jill Filipovich says, the left is celebrating Stormy Daniels as a hero. And the reason that I, I cite this is because while the opinion pages in the New York Times objective news pages are separate, the reality is that they're not quite all that separate. 
Okay, the, the same media sensibility that informs an editorial page that thinks Jill Filipovich has relevant things to say about Stormy Daniels being a feminist hero, they're the same folks who are pushing bad news over at CNN. The, the hard distinction between opinion and journalism doesn't really exist. Okay, it's why we over at The Daily Wire admit what our biases are, but the objective news media at places like CNN will not admit that bias. Instead, they claim they are objective truth tellers, when in reality, most of them feel, feel like Jill Fil Filipovich does. Anyway, Filipovich continues. She says, Ms. Daniels' lack of shame about her line of work has led to a right-wing escalation with conservative media outlets hounding her as a prostitute once they realized she would meet porn star with a shrug. Well, I mean, no. People were calling her kind of a prostitute because she was kind of a prostitute. Like, I mean, just like having sex on film for pay is not markedly better than having sex not on film for pay. Rudy Giuliani, one of Mr. Trump's lawyers, said in June, although he respects all human beings, Ms. Daniels is apparently one exception. He said, I don't respect a porn star the way I respect a career woman or a woman of substance or a woman who has great respect for herself as a woman and as a person, he said, and isn't going to sell her body for sexual exploitation. So Stormy, you want to bring a case, let me cross-examine you. The threat is that Mr. Giuliani would do to Ms. Daniels what lawyers have done for centuries to imperfect women, and in particular, rape victims. Okay, how is a feminist equating a woman who has sex for money on film for the pleasure of men with a rape victim. How is that even a possibility? You wanna know, know the most anti-feminist thing that I've heard today? It is this, okay? It is not anything that Rudy Giuliani said. It's something I'm saying right now. The most anti-feminist thing you can say is that Stormy Daniels is akin to a rape victim in any way. She is not a rape victim. She's a woman who voluntarily has sex for money. Again, none of this is to let President Trump off the hook for stooping women who have sex for money, which he does apparently on a fairly regular basis. But the left attempts to paint everyone who is anti-Trump as some sort of great hero in the struggle, I don't think it's going to redound to their benefit in the long run. Filipovich says, Mr. Giuliani contrasted Miss Daniels with three beautiful women, classy women, women of great substance, who Mr. Trump has married, perfectly encapsulating the profoundly misogynist virgin whore dichotomy imposed on women where we can only be perfectly good or entirely bad. Well, no, women can be flawed, but if you choose to do what Stormy Daniels does, that comes along with some character consequences. It's, it's pretty insane that, that this article was considered brilliant enough to make the pages of the New York Times, but this is where we are. This is, this is where we are. So this is, this is just great stuff. Stormy Daniels, heroin.